The following thoughts on Happy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. What's up? This is Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, and this next guest I had on over a year ago, can't believe it, from the Eric Zane Show on 107.3 WBBL in Grand Rapids. The host, Eric Zane, is on Happy Hour. What's up, man? Ryan, thanks for having me again, man. That was uh, I'm, I'm really glad that you uh, reached out again. You were awesome the first time we spoke, and your podcast has really taken off. That You have a lot to be proud of. When I saw that your uh, uh, podcast information, or your uh, podcast with Anthony, uh, with, I'm sorry, with Anthony, went on all access, that was that's a big deal, man. Yeah, dude, I was so happy with Perry Michael Simon. I just asked him, hey, man, would you want to help me get some coverage? And he writes up that whole article. None of that was worded by me within a whole hour. And Anthony was cool, too. All I had to do was email his PR girl, and I had it within five days. I mean, things were going good, man. No, that's really good, too. And Anthony's a big name, and the fact that he did that is also very kind. Um, And I I was glad to see and, and hear the whole thing. Very, very cool. So I was listening to the show we did last year, and this is before you first joined WBBL. It was weird timing. I remember like three days after that, you tweet out, I'm going to be doing the morning show. So things happen really quickly for you. But I'm just happy you're doing well because at that time last year, you were talking about how you wanted to kill yourself and how you weren't sure about yourself. So it's cool to see that you're doing well post Free Beer and How Wings era. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a wild ride. I can't believe it's been a year. Um, but, yeah, man, it's going, it's going great. It's going really well. I'm super excited. Have you talked to the bosses? Like, were they happy that you made it a year? Were there people that were impressed? Well, yeah, they were happy. What do you think? They were going, oh, boy, here, it's one year. I'm so pissed. <laughs> no, I get what you mean, man. They, uh, uh, they, you know, they've been very supportive from the very beginning, and uh, and everything has been extremely cool. I was talking to you off air about this, and I'll say it now too, dude. Your show sounds better than ever, man. It sounds like it's really getting into the groove of things, and you and your co-host OJ going back and forth, man. It's great radio, man. I like listening to it. Yeah, we've got a kind of like that uh, uh, millennial old man thing going on, which I guess isn't, you know, I mean, I guess it works in some respects. And, uh, uh, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's worked before, but it's, it, you know, it took a little a little while for us, longer than, I, than we'd like to get that chemistry, but um, I can feel that. And, uh, and, you know, we're just like any show starting over. It's, um, it's, it was a new show, and, uh, and uh, I had a little bit of, of uh, heritage that people checked out the show, but the bottom line is you got to do a good show. So uh, I'm very, very excited to hear you say that because um, even from you said a couple months ago is when you listened. From then to now, I know it's changed. There's been a different dynamic because we got a new, a, an additional person who's there, and that's kind of been a, 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 a kind of a galvanizing thing when the three of us have gotten together. So... What is your key to making it work with all the different changes in your whole team over the past year, the people that have joined the show and left the show? What was your key to making it work and just keep on moving? Um, I think, Ryan, it's been don't panic, but I did panic. Thank God my wife was here to every day to tell me not to panic. Um, and then be patient um, because – I'm starting to realize now, oh, okay, it, 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 it does get easier. I think that was the key to um, to remain patient and then just give yourself the time because it's going to come around. It's kind of like when you first started doing hobby hour, and you, know, you probably didn't feel very good. You, you mean, you were you sure you were recording and you had microphones, but something was probably telling you, ah, boy, I don't know if I got it. Now it's much easier for you because you've done it for so long. So it, it's pretty much just uh, what everybody else has experienced. Dude, radio is a weird business because we all have egos and we all want to make everyone happy, but the biggest thing is to make ourselves happy. If you're not happy with yourself, you're not going to put out a good product ever. That's what I've learned. Yeah, man, that's that's absolutely true. And I think it all boils down to are you having fun or not? And um, the, those first couple months, yeah, we were doing a show, but I'd say maybe for a, a brief window of time during the full hours we're on, I was actually like, oh, this is good, or I enjoy it. Now we go days 
even weeks, and I before feeling uncomfortable, like maybe we maybe we didn't have our best stuff for that day. But you know, it all boils down to: Are we talking at the same time? If we are, that's a problem. Um, are we? Is it is it normal conflict? It's not really like we're really pissed at each other. You know, just those basic things. So since you work with a team that is younger than you, what have been some of the things you have learned over the past year from them? <laughs> well, it's given me, I'm glad, that's a great, great question, man, because, you know, it's, um, it's challenging because sometimes I'll make a joke or a reference and they just don't get it. It's too old. And uh, it's, I think that that's a, that's a good thing. I think if I get, you know, I mean, because... Uh, Still, the other people are getting the joke who are my age, and that's good because I want a wide audience. But if they don't get it, it's kind of funny. It's an interesting dynamic to, to blast out a joke about, like, you know, the love boat or something like that, or uh, and, and nobody gets it. And, you know, it's just a funny dynamic. Like, we talked about the chick from Happy Days who passed away. And Julius is like, what the hell is that? I don't even know. So, you know, it's just fun stuff like that. It's weird, man. I have a weird mix of uh, references that I get. So, like, I know about the girl from Happy Days that died, but I have heard you talk about the Love Boat and old shows, and, dude, you immediately lose me. You know what I mean? It's very bizarre how within 20 years there's so much that's yeah. different about us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, right. And I think that, you know, depending on what your goal is, um, you want to you, you want you want the jokes to hit as many people as possible. So I think it's a safe thing to stick with current events. If you do fire off a joke that only uh, glances the target, be ready to take a beam, as you rightfully should. Uh, so that way you get the funny. That way you get the funny if anybody did get the joke, and you get the funny if they beat the hell out of you if they if, they, if it missed their mark, and that's okay. So. What is your key? And maybe you did this the same time you worked with Free Beer and Hot Wings. What is the key to finding prep on a slow news day? Because if there's not news going on with my show, I can't find things to talk about. So over the years in radio, how have you found prep on a slow news day? Well, that's interesting because when I was on uh, on my last show, I did not look, nor did I try to find it. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so that was the dynamic at the time. But in the past year, that won't cut it. So what that means is, you know, um, I have, first of all, I'm fortunate because Julius and uh, Ben, who's third guy in, help with that immensely. And uh, I've, my audience has become very, very active. Um, it's more so, I think, than any audience I've experienced before. And we've they refer they were referred to as the Zaniacs. They uh, drive content with a lot a lot of leads on stories, so that's been great. So between the Zaniacs um, show contributors, like a, from a guy like a guy named Stu McAllister and and uh, Julius and Ben and myself, just constantly keeping the ear to the ground, paying attention. What could be funny? Maybe if you, maybe you got a bit in your head, just constantly writing it down. Um, the writing process goes till you go to bed and wake up the next morning. We're ready to go by 8 p.m. And it's all, and then we have it planned. And if anything else develops between the time we go to bed and the time we get up, we're just ready to throw stuff out the window. But I've never once had a time where we didn't have anything to talk about. How did you guys cover the Aaron Hernandez era? Like, what is your take overall on him? I'm more sad for his kid that's going to have to know all these weird things about the dad. That's the only part I'm sad about. Yeah, and that's a, that's a good, that's a fair thing to say. That's absolutely appropriate. Um, this guy was a little bit crazy. Um, you know, I, that's a terrible story. It's, it's just hard to imagine somebody who would take someone's life despite having the entire world at his fingertips with his athletic abilities. So, yeah, you know, we parked on that stuff. There wasn't a whole lot of funny going on with that. It was just <laughs> weird to be on the air when the story broke. But, you know, it's worth talking about because that's a big deal story. So, yeah, that's uh, – I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. There isn't uh, much more other than I can't believe that little girl has to 
us to do that. It was interesting because a lot of people were like, you know, um, when they tweeted stuff out, it almost seemed they were rather sympathetic towards Aaron. And, and I don't know if I'd ever go that route um, because he killed somebody. You know, he, he affected so many lives with what he did. And I don't believe for a second that he didn't do the other one. But, man, that's crazy that everybody jumped out of the woodwork like, oh, Aaron, we're going to miss you. It's like, you are? What are you going to miss? The, the psychopath side of him? Dude, what's weird about it, too, is he helped that team go to the Super Bowl like in 2012 when they lost to the Giants, and he was so good that year because I think Rob was hurt, if I remember correctly. So, I mean, dude, he had so much potential. If he could have just been normal and not killed people, imagine that dynamic between him and Rob Gronkowski and Tom Brady. That would have been beautiful. Yeah, I know it. But, Joe, let's side note, uh, silver lining. Because he wasn't in the picture, Crack got all the press. We got all those amazing moments, like when he busts into the press conference, the press briefing with Sean Spicer. Dude, how awkward was that? I watched it on uh, Twitter, so you can just replay the video. I replayed that 40 times, maybe. I was so bored at night, and I couldn't quit laughing. It was so awkward. Oh, yeah. It was one of my favorite things ever, and he knew what he was doing. It was so much fun. God, that was great. I love the pick too. I don't know if you saw it of Rob and Trump doing the knuckle, and it's just so awkward. I love it. Yeah, yeah, very, very funny. I love that guy. During the election, did you guys talk a lot about it, or did you try to kind of not talk about it? Um, we did, and if I had to do it again, I don't know if I would have. Um, I think I think that hurts my show when I talk in any way about politics. I live in a very conservative part of the world. And um, even if I'm bashing Mrs. Clinton or whomever, I just, I've I've really, in the past six months, have really dove into, I I don't want to be in in any way involved in any political discussion because it's above my pay grade and I'm so not comfortable with it. Uh, I don't even, when... Uh, anybody on Saturday Night Live. I used to play the bits when they would imitate him and things like that, the president. I don't even do that anymore because, it's to me, it's dangerous. And I, I don't want to be any part of that. I want to get audience through our chemistry and our dynamic. And I don't want to play other people's freaking bits. I want to do my bits. And I, and I don't want to do political ones. I don't even think it was that great on SNL. I think it was more funny that it was spot on impersonations. But, I mean, it just became a broken record each week. You knew that Alec was going to open up by bashing Trump. To me, the charm right. left To me, the charm left after, like, the second week. Yeah, and you know that every single member of that show hates his guts. So if you dive in and say, this is the funniest thing in the world. Everybody, half your audience is going to want to kill you. So screw it. I, I don't want any part of that shit forever. Going back to your show, man. What I like about it is you do a very good job of being relatable to the Midwest radio audience because I'm from Chicago. I worked in Cleveland, and, dude, they love their morning shows in their market. So I can definitely tell that you're good at relating to the Midwest. Well, thanks, man. I I mean, basically, I I look at it as uh, uh, my new radio network is is three counties, four counties, or however many it is around here that, uh, that we deal with. And, uh, yeah, we try to make as much hay as possible, uh, basically doing what I've always done, which is kind of telescoping it towards our neck of the woods. What I liked, too, was back on the old show, you would rip into Bill Simonson, but I love hearing you guys on the air now. It makes for good radio. It's cool to hear that you guys are good now. Yeah, that was uh, was a pretty messed up time in my life, looking back on the entire era. Um... I liked the job. I could never do it again uh, because I'm kind of committed to the direction that I'm in, and I'm, I'm much more comfortable in it. And part of that had, had to uh, go with um, making up with Bill. And, you know, to be honest, it happened two years, sometime before that, actually. I don't know, it might not have been two years that Bill and I had figured it out that we shouldn't be so mean. And I was always more mean to him than he was to me. So um, that seed was planted sometime prior when we had a truce. So when it started to 
um, work out that we could work together. So everybody just said, oh, you're just kissing his ass because you work together. And, you know, that's, that's not exactly true. I mean, yeah, yeah, I want harmony because it's easier to be nice than be me. But, uh, you know, we had, we had figured it out sometime earlier. And that, so we're, we're on the same page, and that's good. What has been your key to winning over the audience that wants to hear you talk about basketball and football in the morning? How have you guys approached being more of a male-oriented talk show on a sports radio network? Yeah, the the, uh, the ones that we were able to keep that were um, all about the sports, I've heard things like, yeah, you know, I, I get it. I've been able to get what sports I need because, because we do talk sports when it's warranted, but um, those ones have said, yeah, I get it. You know, I didn't, uh, they, they've been able to uh, grasp what we're trying to achieve, and that's good. The ones that only wanted sports, we kind of lost them, and I don't know if they'll ever be back, but, um, you know, I just, uh, uh, it being that we're kind of like on this, uh, it's this hybrid show, and it's all sports station, you're right, it does put, it did put us in a little bit of a interesting spot, but I think basically what we try to do is just one at a time try to win over listeners, literally one at a time. I mean, we do the very basic stuff, right? We go and deliver coffee and donuts to your workplace, and I'm sitting there in front of 10 people, and I'm, I'm literally asking them, do you listen? And I'll have four of them, our, our, our listeners who listen all the time, six who don't. And then I have this opportunity there. I said, look, I'm asking you to try it out. Tell me what you think. And uh, and they and I've heard feedback from like Joe Blow in situations just like that. So I'm absolutely, literally one at a time trying to get audience share. What has been the harshest advice you heard from either bosses, other on-air hosts, or the regular Joe Schmo listener? Um. Well, I'm a really thin-skinned. Goof, man. Uh, so I, it's really bad, and I, I've got I probably the. I, I'm really, I really need to work on that. When people say anything that I don't like, man, it is a tough, tough road for me. So to me, it's all terrible. Uh, so you know, anytime I get any attack, it wrecks me. It really hurts me bad. Um, I, as you know, the anxiety with me is a very, very real thing. And all I'm trying to do is stay here and ride out into the sunset at this radio station. And when people tell me I'm terrible and you suck and you're the worst thing and I hate everything about your show and I hope you die, it ruins me. And, uh, you know, everybody, uh, people at the radio station know that. And they say, why, why, why? I said, look, I don't know, man. I don't know why I'm built this way. But, yeah, it, it's, it, it affects me. Dude, I have the best advice for you, and this is what I began doing. Whenever somebody says, go kill yourself, say, thanks, man, have a great rest of the weekend, and send them a kissing emoji. It makes it so awkward that they never talk to you ever again. If you send them a kissing or a heart emoji, they're like, what the hell? I thought he was going to be mean. That's the best advice I can give, because I get a lot of hate, too. Just make it very awkward and nice, and then they're like, that's not what I was expecting. Right on, man. That's a good idea. Trust me, if you try it this week, I think you'll win over a lot of listeners because they want to hear us yell at them. They have the small egos where they like the fact that they're talking to somebody on the radio. Of course. I, I never fight. Well, I try not to. In fact, I, I can't remember the last time I tried to fight back fire with fire. I just, I've learned that's the one thing I have learned is let it go. But, man, it, it, tell you what, if you work for a competing radio station and you send me a fake email... Yeah, rest assured, you've wrecked my day. What I want to ask you too, Eric, is have you had any communication with the old show? Has there been any uh, animosity that has sort of simmered down over the past 14 months going on 15? Um, I don't know. Um, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, there was a lot of hurt feelings um, between both parties. I was stupid. I still maintain they were stupid. I don't know if they see it that way. 
I imagine a very long conversation would have to take place in order to sort that out. Um, I, I still, I still have a. a, a you ever like when someone does you wrong, or whatever it may be, how you sit there and you uh, try to think a plot about what you do like to do to them if you if you uh, saw them at a bar or whatever, you know. What the, I still I, I still do that, which tells me I'm not over it, man. So um, until that day comes, I, I just I just try to keep my mouth shut um, in the event that we ever are in an opportunity to. Uh, to to, uh, to have it all worked out, then I, I should probably just shut up. You know what I mean? To me, nothing good happens if you just keep talking about it because you have a lot of good things going for you. Like you're the new PA announcer for the Grand Rapids soccer team. How's that going? Yeah, that is fantastic. Um, the fact that they uh, they they reached out to me that kind of um, has allowed uh, you know one more thing to be done to be able to be out in front of people and. And uh, so that with the basketball team and the hockey team, it, it, it's very, very busy to be doing all this stuff. How do you prep to be a PA announcer? What's the difference between prepping to be a PA announcer and prepping for the radio show? That, that what's crazy about that is just, uh, uh, you know, basically know the names. And that's it. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to it. But I will say when I started back with the basketball team before I got fired the first time, I thought that was the hardest job in the world because it's so fast. It's much, uh, and you're constantly have to announce who scored and stuff like that. And I didn't think I was cut out for that, but I eventually figured it out. Uh, soccer, you know, basically, dude, it just announced goals. Uh, there's a foul or a red card or whatever. Or somebody gets tossed. Uh, and then read the sponsors. So, you know, it's pretty low key. And then just have fun. You know, they what they're looking for is somebody who can make who can interact with the band, stuff like that, based on what they see. So you do a lot of things. You're a you're a dad, you're a husband, you work in radio, you work in sports. What do you do in your free time so you don't burn out? Yeah, well, you know, what I used to do more was a different balance because I did so much training. I always trained for triathlon, like 20 hours a week. And I don't have nearly the time that I have. Um, uh, I, now I don't have nearly the time that I had back then to be able to do that. But I still do it. I still have a hand in it. And so that, that's it. And I, I go, like right now I'm walking into my daughter's track me, But don't worry, it doesn't start for a little bit. Uh, so stuff with my kids. I like to camp. And um, and then, uh, you know, doing, like, trading stuff, a lot of that. What are some of the best parts about living in the Grand Rapids area? Well, this uh, this area is great because it's not too packed, you know. There's not there's not too many people where there's gridlock. Uh, I don't have to go far on my bike to be in the middle of nowhere. And you're right by Lake Michigan. So, you know, I mean, being from Chicago, you know how often that can be. Now, uh, how much do they love their local Grand Rapids teams? Is it a big fan base there in town? Um, yeah, but you know what it is about the fan bases? They're, you know, you've got the hardcores, the however many might be season ticket holders and stuff like that. And you know how, like, when you go to, like, a Blackhawks game or the, or the, um, or the Red Wings game, it's sold out of, of uh, you know, diehards. They, they get that way during the playoffs as the team gets further in the playoffs. So a lot of people go there. It's more like just an experience that they're fun, uh, a fun time. And then as the season goes on, then they all turn into diehards. So it kind of waves a little bit, but they still pack them in for all these uh, big sporting events. Now, where do you want to see yourself and the show in five years? Would you want to be syndicated in different markets, or do you want to keep it local in Grand Rapids? You know, man, that's a great question, and I swear to God, I enjoy this so much be with the way it is right now um, that I would, oh, God, I would just, it would kill me to have to go back to syndication. The money's a lot better. There's no question, but, man, something happened um, when just the ability to be right here in the backyard, something I hadn't had the opportunity to do in forever. So, yeah, I, I, you know, being that uh, it's, you know, I have a choice 
what, if I ever had a choice one day, that would be tough. That would be really tough to choose because, you know, if you have an opportunity to be heard all around the country, I, I'm scared that I would lose the magic that made us what we were in, in the little market because the fact of the matter is we won't – we wouldn't ever be syndicated unless we had made a huge impact here. And then the company thought, well, listen, we should syndicate it. I, I don't know, man. I, th- I think I would lose something, and I, 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 would, I might feel bad about that. Now, for people that live in Grand Rapids or don't live in Grand Rapids, how can they hear your show, and why should they tune in? Oh, yeah. Well, um, if, if they've never heard the show before, um, I'll, I'll go and uh, start with why they should listen. If, if the type of show you want to listen to is, is uh, one that usually involves a, a certain feel and a dynamic to it of, uh, uh, um, I don't know, it just seems like we're always having fun. It's always a topical conversation about stuff going on in the world and our own takes on it. And you give us a little bit of time to get used to who's saying what. I, I think that anybody would enjoy it. Uh, man, woman, young, old. Um, and uh, I think the and the best way to listen is either on the WBBL app, which you can download, uh, or uh, listen online at WBBL.com. You can also get the free podcast, which is available several ways. You can watch well, pretty much every platform, but um, I usually stick with um, iTunes. You can download it for free on iTunes. Just search Eric Zane Show. Uh, all that is at WBBL.com as well, and you can stream it at audioboom.com. Well, dude, keep up the good work, man. I'm happy that you are doing well and that the show has grown over the last year. It's cool to listen every time and hear the show improve each and every day. So it's been a lot of fun having you on Hoppy Hour. Yeah, likewise, man. I'm really, really uh, liking the development of this show, too. You're an excellent interviewer, and it's good to see that people are acknowledging you and uh, and letting you know that, man. Um, That's very, very cool. Thank you, Eric. Keep up the good work, dude. We'll talk, Brian. Thanks again. And that was Eric Zane from the Eric Zane Show on 107.3 WBBL in Grand Rapids as he called into Happy Hour. Now, if you're a fan of Eric Zane's show and you want to hear my show, I would like to think that it's the same type of format and genre as the male-oriented talk radio he works in. So if you want to hear my show, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. All you have to do is go to the app shop for Google Play. Or the iOS, search up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio, and there you can listen anywhere in the world. Go to my website, ryanhoppyradio.com. That's R-Y-A-N-H-O-P-P-E radio.com. And that's my name on all social media platforms, but Snapchat. That's Hoppy Radio. All right, this has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, saying peace out. Happy Hour. Happy Hour.